And now... Ladies and gentlemen... Please fasten your seatbelts. Welcome to PreneurCast. You know, business cards being swapped, beers being drunk. Can I say a nasty word? Can I say procrastination? With Pete Williams and Tom Gosher. How well did that go down? Talk about that entire thing in a very another rant and soapbox episode if you want to. Visit us online at PreneurMarketing.com. Okay, buddy, how are you doing this week? Doing very well, mate. Doing very, very well yourself. Yeah, I'm good. I'm uh, I'm having a few time time zone challenges. Um, my, as you know, a lot of my clients um, are over by you. Yes, uh, in, in your part of the world. In fact, increasingly so. I, <laughs> I seem to get kind of pick pick one up a week, really. Very cool. Either inquiries or actual kind of new clients, and uh, my number of um, UK clients, which is my nearest country, is dwindling, uh, and and. Although I, I've got one client and they've got offices all over the world, literally. And uh, I was talking to one of their operatives in the US last night and they said, basically, if you're not careful, you can work 24 hours talking to our team. <laughs> and that that has happened in this last week. Oh, God. I literally went on a 24-hour stint. They have a major launch coming up and their launch team is all over the world. And... Uh, yeah, I just spent pretty much 24 hours. I, I had an, a day without sleep. That is insane, um, my friend. That is insane. Yeah, it's, it's insane and it's unhealthy. Folks, if you're listening out there, however important it seems that you have to stay up and stay awake, it isn't. <laughs> sleep is far more important yeah. because it will catch you up. Um, Absolutely. And it, it's hit me hard. But, um, but you know, I... I it's the price of, of being uh, a popular person and, and being good at what you do. You know? and it, uh, I, I, I could say I blame you um, because, uh, because um, you know, in your excellent presentation at the uh, Going Pro Conference for Edge, you stood up and you talked about your, your totally mind-bendingly uh, high-speed video production technique. Uh, using the mind maps, which got you and that that and the whole of your presentation, which is awesome, got you a standing ovation. Um, and then you very kindly mentioned to a few choice people that um, I was a key part of that video production. And the phone hasn't stopped ringing. <laughs> oh, well, Matt, good work. It's, uh, it's it's what it's all about. You deliver good work, and uh, word spreads. Yeah, it's it's it seems to be the truth. It seems it's to be it. the truth. So, how about you? What's what's been uh, what's been happening with you this week? Uh, I bought a new bike. That's the uh, the the biggest excitement in my week this week. So got, a push bike, got, yeah, push bike for the for the uh, Ironman triathlon. So I've got uh, training on that starting very shortly. So uh, picked up a new bike, uh, and that's pretty much the, the the excitement that was this week. So haven't had a chance to get out on it and actually uh, hit the hit the road with it yet, which is uh, a little annoying. So it's sitting in the office um, just outside my. Um, my windows. I'll sort of sit there and look at it all day. So hopefully on Saturday I'll be able to get out and hit the pavement for for a few hours with a, a podcast or two uh, in the headphones and go for that. So that should be fun. Top banana. Yeah. I, I I would make fun of you with the whole with the whole staring longingly at the bike thing, but I know as a I know I used to know a few um, competitive athletes who did the Ironmans and things, and I know it's a pretty big deal. Yeah. So um, looking forward to getting out on it. So. Yeah. I will not ask you how much you paid. <laughs> <laughs> Too much. Actually, I got a pretty yeah. good deal because I uh, have helped the uh, the bike store with some marketing and bits and pieces, but uh, uh, still a lot for a bicycle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Especially a bicycle I'm only really planning on using for six months. <laughs> I think we'll change the subject. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Let, let's br- let's bring it down to earth with a crash. How's the book going? Um, yeah, slowly pushing through, grinding through. Uh, I guess that's the you know the, the typical battle of, of trying to ship and things like that. And uh, progress is good. Um, I think as I mentioned in last week's episode, I'm really looking forward to breaking the back of it um, uh, poolside with a pina colada in Bali. So looking forward to that. Did you uh, did you cave and buy the keyboard for the iPad, or are you going whole hog and taking a laptop with you? Uh, I decided to go with the laptop. I was going to take the laptop okay. with me, so I thought Fair I hunted enough. hard, and I thought, well, realistically, once I put the iPad and a keyboard in there, it's not much smaller than a laptop. Yeah, you just can't let go of that laptop. I know. Nah, it's uh, joined to me at the hip. There's too many. There's too many shiny tools on it. It's not, you know, because of all the things that you do. It's like me. I find myself if I go near a machine that doesn't have text expander on it, for example. Yes. 
I, I type some very odd things on machines <laughs> that don't have text expander. <laughs> I think it all comes back to just having a very efficient workflow. And um, realistically, like I could go away and, and still produce content and work and do most of the stuff I need to on the iPad and a keyboard, but it's not going to be as efficient. And then it's that, that yeah. question mark. If I'm going to be actually, you know, doing some work for a couple of hours every day over a 10 day period. I want to be efficient because I think there's that routine element of it as well. And I think, you know, when you listen to people who are, uh, you know, serial authors or, or creatives as such, I can't remember who this quote is from, but a, a quote that I just love is that, you know, I always just wait for inspiration to strike before I write. Luckily it strikes at 9.01 AM every morning. And it's basically the whole, I guess the premise of that is that, you know, to you get in that routine and that routine is what's causing the creativity. So as weird as it might sound, I really do think if I did have the iPad and the keyboard, I could get work done, but I wouldn't be efficient because I'd be like just fiddling trying to make stuff happen because I wouldn't have Scrivener to do my writing and I'd have to be doing it in text files. And I can still produce, but I think as soon as that, that routine breaks and that workflow breaks, you actually can lose some of that creativity or that spark because your mind has to go about, oh, how do I do this? It doesn't stay on, on track. And I think that also comes back to the way Gary Halbert used to write copy. And a lot of the great copywriters do is that when they're writing copy, when they're wanting to find out about the the actual dynamics of the product they're talking about, whether it might be a, a golf club, I think is the example that Ed Dale uses when he tells this story, is that um, you know Gary Hubble was writing copy one day and he just got into that routine of writing copy. And when he wanted to actually start talking about what the grip of the uh, the golf club is made of, made out of in the draft letter he wrote he just wrote the foreskin of albino whales or something really obscure like that um because it stood out so when he went back through the draft he'd actually pick that up and, and write the exact um you know structural material that the, the the grip was made out of that helps you swing better or whatever it might be so i think it's all about rituals and routines and getting in that routine and um i sort of try and develop a bit more of a morning routine uh, of the stuff i'm doing which seems to be working really well from a productivity perspective which we can touch on at some stage but i think it is about rituals and i think that's that's really important so taking that laptop with me it means i can sort of stay in that creative ritual that i've got in terms of how i actually go about writing something or producing some sort of content i don't have to actually break um that that flow so to speak I think I'm um, thinking about it now and you positioning it that way. I completely agree. You know, when we first talked about it last week about, you know, iPad versus laptop and I was I my my brain was thinking, you know, overloading the amount of kit that you're taking and it was thinking, you know, having just having too much worky kind of stuff with you on holiday. But when it comes down to it, I completely agree because I mean, just being away from the machine that I've got, my work machine, even if I take out the fact that I need a high power processor to do the video and audio editing, you know, as you say, you have a tool for writing, it's Scrivener. And you know, you know, the keyboard shortcuts for it, you know where everything is. If you were to, if you were to work efficiently on the iPad, I mean, we know, we do know people that do, you know, Ed, Ed Dale is probably the most famous exponent of the, the iPad workflow you know but he's worked on that for months and months and months to get all the tools lined up to pick the right tool to know how to use it you know i mean the guy's got basically the equivalent of keyboard shortcuts on an ipad mm. um you know and and you're right because a lot of people a lot of people talk about this a lot of people slightly different but they do they talk about you know don't upgrade software don't don't change things in the middle of a of a creative process because you'll actually get caught up in fiddling with the software and not doing the work well yeah exactly and and that was my mindset is that if i'm going to you know only allow myself and i think you know the the positive constraint type of argument as well is really important if i'm going to have that positive constraint of only 2 hours of work a day while i'm away um poolside in, in Bali, I don't want to be spending two thirds of that time trying to work out how the heck to actually co copy and paste a paragraph um, by sort of, if I get in that flow and I need to sort of make some arrangements or some changes to what I've written on the iPad, I have to actually go and actually then learn the tech. And it's just like, well, hang on, that's not going to be, that's not going to be the most effective use of my two hours a day. So how can I be effective the best way in that positive constraint that I'm, I'm giving myself? Uh, and that's why I'm taking the laptop because it'll allow me to be effective and efficient inside that positive constraint that I'm setting myself.
Absolutely. I, I, I really, you know, I mean, it's, it's one of those things, you know, uh, it's one of the it's one of the reasons I like working with you is because of your ability to have that high level perspective over things, and while my initial response was was based on the bleeding obvious, yours stood back and actually looked at it from a more strategic point of view, um, and as as usual, I kind of go, yeah, good point, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. Yeah, <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean the other the other thing, and you talk about this 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 regularity and creative uh, and uh, and positive constraints and things i think it was um i think it was stephen king the the creativity at 901 yeah uh he's what well, he's he's the certainly his book which escapes me so i will say where foreskin of the albino whale and then insert <laughs> and then insert a note in the show notes about about the uh... it's about on writing <laughs> Is that what you're referring yeah, to? On writing, on thank writing. you, thank you. I didn't want to break my creative flow by going and <laughs> researching that. So I'll just really interrupt you. But, but no, no, good, thank you. On it's writing, good, because otherwise book. I'd laugh for about half an hour about that. Yeah. I managed not to laugh when you said it the first time. <laughs> um, bless Gary Halbert, makes me laugh all the time. Um, but yeah, you know, the other thing, I was, I've been working on a top secret project recently, which we were talking about before the show. Um, and one of the big topics in that project uh it's a training course and the people in it are talking about and this is something that a lot of people talk about in our, in the information marketing industry ab about when you do certain things yeah and that when you do it that's what you're doing and don't mix it up so your example if you're writing so don't go researching about the what the golf handle is made of so you insert a silly word and come back because it's just a draft you know, um, and, and Ed Dale, when he talks about speed writing and things like that, that's a big point he makes. Just write, just write, edit second, write mm -hmm. first, write only, come back to it later and edit. Yeah, it's the downdraft, um, updraft argument. Yeah, yeah, I and mean, you've talked about that as well in the past. But the other thing that that's, that um, the, the product that I'm, I'm working on at the moment for someone talks about researching, um, and they use the term curation. And the moment this product gets released, everybody listening to this will know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, but they talk about curation and they say, basically, look, you know, if you're, if you're researching, reading about information in your market and, and kind of pinging out quick opinions about it, um, that's great. But if you come across something and you go, well, you know what? Actually, that's inspired me to write a big article. I'm going to go away and write a big article, you know don't whatever you do don't do it you know make yourself a little note have a little inbox if you want to talk about gtd um you know put maybe maybe put something in your inbox in omnifocus uh, if it was you or i who use omnifocus all day long um you know put a note somewhere to say look big article on this anything you can think of but then get back to that main task and and that's one of the things i think you know it's a slight detail from what we were talking about but I think that's one of those things. That if you've got a lot of things to do, one having a having a constraint and saying I'm only going to do it or I'm going to do it at this time every day, whether it is creative or whether it's mundane, I think is a good thing. Mm. And the other thing is, one stick to it, but two, and this is the thing that made the difference to me, have a system or a place that you can put the things that occur to you while you're doing that thing, but you haven't got, the, but but they're not relevant right now. So in your case, if you're writing creatively while you're in, in Bali and you think, oh, crikey, yeah, um, I need to change the logo on my shipping invoices for the, for the headset company, <laughs> you know, instead of stopping your creative writing and, you know, mess, winging off an email to your staff or whatever, if you just have a little pad on the side that says, you know, logo, header, whatever, or you fire up OmniFocus because you've got your laptop. Option space um, bar, baby. Option space there bar. There you go. Option space bar. Um that's going out and going in an intro somewhere definitely yeah <laughs> you know but it, it's just keeping that keeping that momentum within that within that space and that's it i mean this is what coming back bringing us back on topic it's all about keeping the momentum having a place where you start the momentum um blocking out the time with the create with the positive constraints and then keeping it um that's, that's 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 something that I definitely struggled with in the past. I think momentum is also important from, a, a, again, a high-level perspective. It's not only a momentum in the the moment of creation, 
the moment of riding or whatever it might be. But also I think uh, momentum on a weekly, monthly basis is, you know, if you can make the commitment every day to ride at 9 a.m. or whatever it might be or, or have a morning ritual when you get up every morning, the first hour of my day is going to incorporate these X amount of things, whatever it might be. The more you do that on a daily basis as well, that will build that momentum as well. So I think momentum is a huge force that's that's not really harnessed as much as it should be by entrepreneurs. I think they don't sort of have that structured momentum, or they they don't want to they don't feel like they want to, or any creative really doesn't want to structure momentum because I think that sort of goes against the whole creative vibe. But um, all the people who are seen as creative, uh, you know, that's not how it works. Yeah, I mean, Ed, Ed Dale's a big, a big, big person to talk about that. You know, the the big names. He he likes to talk about the big names and people like Stephen King. You know, Stephen King's book on writing really does lay that one out quite clearly. You know, there's a good story behind it, as you, know, you would hope so with Stephen King. But um, the truth of the matter is, the guy does. You know, <laughs> he has a desk in a place that, that never moves. He has the same things on the desk, and at the same time every day, up he gets and in he goes. You know, the psychologists say that it takes 30 days to properly form a habit. Mm. Um, 30 consecutive whatevers or whatever. Um, you can do it in less, but to really make it solid. And I think that's it. You know, once you've done it, you've done it. Um, and, and I think one of the things that, that people struggle with, and this is something that when I was younger, I have a, I have a little story about this. When I was younger... The idea of, of something taking a long period of time and doing the same same thing every day used to be crazy to me. And oh, these things always are when you're younger, you know. As, you, as, a, as a child, you think, oh, crikey, when I'm, when I'm 18, that's a long way away. And now I'm a long way away from 18 on the other side. And, it's <laughs> um, and, and the, the, the example of kind of doing a little thing every day or setting th- something in motion and then kind of just checking on it... Um, uh, is is one of those things you know uh, a lot of people talk about it just just allocating half an hour a day you know half an hour or an hour can just mass up the most phenomenal amount of content or progress on a project um as long as you do that create the positive constraint thing you know and it's like this is what i'm doing and i've got to try and get it done in this time you know, focusing your mind on that on that task for that period of time, and then doing it consistently. It's one, it's habit forming if you do it consistently, and two, the amount you can get done is phenomenal. I uh, think. Oh, I, I couldn't agree more. Absolutely couldn't agree more. And and the thing that I think is a great way to, if you want to get a bit granular, implement that and um, make it stick and, and make it actually be a, a, le- a lever for, for the rest of your, 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 your business and your life and your day, your week, whatever it might be, is do that thing first thing in the morning. Uh, an awesome, awesome quote that I uh, got from um, Joe Polish, who uh, has another great podcast, um, I Love Marketing, which I think marketers should really listen to uh, after they listen to our episode every week. But um, what Joe talks about, he was involved with uh, Bill Phillips, who started the whole Body for Life um, phenomenon, the books and the... Um, infomercials and all that sort of uh, amazing stuff. And while working with Bill, um, Joe asked him a question, and the question was, "What is out of everything that you do to 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 control your body and, and get it right? What's the 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 one trick, the one secret, the the wedge, the lever, the minimum effective dose, whatever that that term should be?" Um, and and Bill's reply was, "Start off with the perfect breakfast." And the reason for that was because you are less likely to, less likely to cheat, you are less likely to get off track, and you're more likely to, to have that whole commitment and consistency uh, influence factor work. Because if you start off with a perfect breakfast, at lunchtime you're going to go, well, I had a good breakfast. I'm not going to cheat. I might as well keep it going. Whereas if you have a, a lousy breakfast and go, oh, look, I'll, I'll eat well at lunch and have a good dinner. By lunch you go, oh, I had a shit breakfast. Don't worry about it. So I've always been one, um, even before I even heard um, Joe mention that, to actually make sure that my morning starts strong. Um, with whatever, and to why, why I've always been a morning person. I've never been a night person. I go against most, you know, internet people and, and, and business people to a certain extent as well. As I'd rather go to bed at ten o'clock and get up at four thirty or five um, and start the day well because I think that actually, um, if I commit to that morning. Uh, uh, action or whatever it might be, 
I can then I'll be con- consistent with that throughout the day, which makes the rest of my day more efficient. And I've only really actually forced myself and disciplined myself for that very first thing, that very first hour in the morning or hour and a half in the morning. But then just through you know self influence, I'm then going to be consistent with that, and I actually have a better performing day without even needing to be as focused and disciplined for the rest of the day. I have to I have to agree with you on that. I mean, the the, the challenge I have is that my my other half is a night owl. And we can miss each other, you know. We can we can kind of not spend a lot of time with each other during <laughs> uh, during any given week if I'm if I'm working on things because my preference is to get up, yeah, uh, and get on with it. Um, and the other thing, I mean, slightly to one side, but but connected to what you've just talked about. Um, years ago, when I first kind of got into interested in the whole GTD and productivity stuff, one of the big big names was uh, Leo. B- Babouta, I think. He, yep. Leo Babouta, Leo Babouta, um, a guy who wrote the blog Zen Habits. Yes. Uh, and one of the first things I ever wrote, read, for, read of his was an article that said, um, start with the big rocks. If you've got to do something, find the biggest, hardest, nastiest problem that you've got to deal with and beat that one first. If you're going to, you know, first thing to, if you've got a list of things to do in a day, do the hardest one first thing in the morning. You know, get it out of the way, um, and and that and and it's that's a, that's it's kind of like what, what, kind of what you were talking about. It's a sense of achievement for the day. You know, get on with it, get it, get it done, get it out of the way, and then everything else is easy. Oh, absolutely, uh, yeah, and that, uh, that that works, that works. But yeah, the 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 whole kind of start the day well. Yeah, I, if you if I start the day badly, I mean, I I go to the point sometimes of literally not speaking to anybody. I'll. I'll I'll, I'll I'll communicate with the cats as I feed them, um, <laughs> because that's the downside of getting up early. It's uh, my other half said, "Well, you got up first. You feed the cats." Uh, <laughs> I'll communicate with the cats, and then I'll shut the office door, and that's it. You know, no no Skypes, no emails, no no negative influence whatsoever. No chance of negative influence. Just get on with what I've got to get on with, and start. That's one of my start the day positively kind of ways. So, do you have a ritual um, that you do every morning? Like a sequence of stuff that you, you do consistently every morning or not? No, and and that's why I'm still not the Zen master of this stuff that you are. Because <laughs> I bet you I bet you do. So uh, I'm I'm gonna scribble notes furtively as you as you tell us what it is. Oh, okay. Uh, I guess it all is. Yeah. Mm, okay. Uh, it depends if I'm training. So if obviously if I'm in the process of, um, you know, training for a, a marathon or, or an Ironman or something like that, then um, the first thing I'll do is train. I'll literally get up, bath, glass of water and train. Um, and one thing, I, I, I guess, a, a way to sort of force myself to do that and literally jump out of bed and, you know, really freezing mornings in winter and go for a run at 5 a.m. or 5.30. It's only a small thing, but I actually get all my running gear or my training gear out ready the night before. Um, mm. it's only a small thing. And I think that makes a big difference to me is it, it def- well, definitely made a big difference to me to build that habit is that I don't, I'm not lying in bed. My alarm doesn't go off. I don't lie in bed going, okay, now where are my running shorts at? Which drawer are they in? Are they in the wash? Are they on the clothesline? Where are they? And that just, you know, the longer you stay in bed, the, the less chance you're getting out. So that's one little trick is I have it all laid out the night before. So it's almost made that commitment and consistency. Again, I've committed to put the the running gear out and the, the, the sh- you know the shoes are out, the socks are out, everything's ready to go. My my um, heart rate monitor, my GPS, whatever it might be, is sitting next to my shoes. So I'm just good to get them on and go without any excuse. So that's sort of uh, I guess the, how the day starts if I'm actually got a training session that's been given to me by my coach. Uh, and then in terms of a, I guess a ritual, so to speak, from a um, a business perspective, it, it, it it's changed and adapted over the years. I actually wrote about. Uh, my original process in uh, my first book. Where is it? So I'm going to find it here. I'll read out what it was seven years ago. Where is it? Sorry, I'm just flipping through. A book. Well, while you're flipping, is 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 that the book that you're giving away the audio of? It is indeed. Thank you for and the... And how uh... might people get hold of that <laughs> audio piece? Uh, if people want to head over to um, petewilliams.com.au or preneurmarketing.com, They'll have options there to uh, join uh, the newsletter list. And as part of that, the very first thing you get is a um, 
a downloaded audio version. I got the, the rights back to this book from John Wiley and Sons, the, the publishers who I did this book with years ago. Um, part of the deal was for me to get the rights back after a certain um, time period, which I have now. So I thought I'd just get the audio book created and, and give it away because the book had done everything it needed to do for me. But um, what I spoke about in that book uh, was what I referred to as a daily success planner. And it was simply just a, I do this the night before um, and it would be the, my four current goals, my four top things I'm working towards and have that listed down. And then what will I do each day to get me closer to each goal? So funnily enough, I guess you'd almost say this is a bit of GTD before David Allen's book came out. Never thought about mm. that. That's kind of cool. Um, so it's literally just uh, four things. Like, and it was, the question was, what will I do tomorrow to get me closer to each goal? And it's just, what's the action I'm going to take the following day to reach each of the goals above? I have a um, tomorrow's friend contact and tomorrow's business contact. So uh, every day I try and stay in touch with a friend via uh, email or a phone call. So I'll make a note of who I want to talk to tomorrow and try and make contact with just to sort of uh, keep in contact with friends and not lose them. Uh, business contact was a, a business person I was going to you know, try and touch base with and network with. And then I had a, a bit of a daily checklist, which was uh, run a minimum of five kilometers today because back then all I was doing was running. Uh, eat two pieces of fruit, repeat my affirmations, do daily sit-ups, do daily push-ups, and then complete the daily success plan for tomorrow. So that was sort of a, a tool that I use myself to sort of, uh, I guess, have that ritual. And, and that ritual sort of adapted over time and things like that. And, and my checklist now, if I, uh, if I go through it, uh, is um, it's about an hour, hour and 10 minutes. I sort of try and do um, almost immediately in the morning. Um, is uh, inbox zero. So I've got about I've got a fifteen minute note next to that. It takes me about fifteen minutes generally most days to get to inbox zero. Uh, it doesn't mean I actually action everything. I don't actually reply to every email or, or do what needs to be done. It's at least allocating those um, uh, emails to uh, my OmniFocus inbox and or replying to emails if I can do it quickly or forward it onto a, a PA or a VA or a staff member. So that's sort of the first thing I do. A lot of people say don't check your emails first thing in the morning. I actually do. It's the very first thing I do. Um, I haven't really tested what my life would be like if I didn't do that. I'm a bit of a, uh, an addict to sort of see what's going on. So, And it's working for me, which is fine. So that's the first thing. Uh, then it's uh, OmniFocus GDT uh, plan. So I'll then actually go into my plan and just sort of get a bit of a mental note of what has to happen today and quickly run through my um, OmniFocus inbox uh, and try and clean out and, and allocate those actions to the various projects and stuff like that and just to have that sort of uh, plan organized uh solid ble- solid breakfast i just have i note that for myself because sometimes i uh, don't always eat as much food as i should particularly coming closer to the iron man i have to really work on my nutrition to make sure i actually uh consume a lot more calories uh, than i normally do and make sure they're the right calories uh vitamins water just two other quick ticks uh lumosity is something that i've been playing with for the last um Little Wire, which is a really cool online tool. So L-U-M-O-S-I-T-Y, Lumosity. And it's just a brain training thing. It's about 20 bucks a month, maybe even less actually, probably a lot less than that. Uh, and um, what it does is that it's simply a tool that you can go and pl- you play games. So, But they're all sort of uh, cognitive mind games. So to help you with your spatial awareness, your attention, your, your number thinking, your memory, all that sort of stuff. And you actually can go through, you can join like little programs. So I'm still at the, uh, coming to the end of the, the basic, um, training and it sort of gives you about five different games every morning, takes about 10 to 15 minutes all up to, to do that. So I'm just going through that basic training. Then I'll pick, you know, the intermediate, then advanced and stuff like that. So just a way to sort of turn my brain on, so to speak, uh, help with the memory and all that sort of stuff, which is really cool. Uh, then the next thing I've got is uh, send out cards. So send out cards is a, a tool that I use to send out postcards and greeting cards through the internet. And then the cards are physically stamped and posted um, with real world stamps and the fonts in my handwriting. Really cool service. Um, send out cards is that. So I'll send a send out card to someone um, every day. So hopefully from someone the day before I've, I've spoken to someone or, or met with someone who um, I want to send a card to, you know, to give you an example. Um, Yesterday, a friend of mine got a promotion uh, at his job. So today's card was to say congratulations to him. Uh, today, I got a phone call from uh, one of my best friends who is looking at going to a new business venture. So probably tomorrow's card will most likely be a, a card to him saying, you know, congratulations, good luck. If I can help, let me know. So it's just a bit of a way to sort of uh, network. And that, that can either be a business a card or a personal card I send out, but make sure I do one every day. Uh, the next thing on my list is email or Facebook a friend. So just 
you know, send a friend a, a message through Facebook or an email just saying, hey, how you doing? What's going on? Just, you know, make sure I sort of stay in contact. Um, forum post replies. So people who have seen my um, Going Analog, sorry, not Going Analog, Going Pro presentation I did at Dale's event, which you can get at, um, I think it's ed education.com. I think basically education.com, you can buy it on there, but um, talks about my, my forum posting process. So I do about 10 minutes of that. Um, then I've got uh, about 10 minutes of writing out swipe file copy um, just to sort of um, ensure that I'm sort of, you know, continually thinking of good ways to communicate and sell and, and, and write and all that sort of stuff is literally just going and, and just spend 10 minutes just, you know, rewriting a good swipe piece, whether it's headlines or a, a Gary Halbert letter and stuff like that. I'll go through that. And then the final thing on my checklist here is change two passwords. So I'll just duck into my um, one password and just change a couple of passwords to make sure that's sort of uh, up and um, updated. And that last one I do cheat on quite a bit. So uh, I should be trying to change two passwords a day just to make sure I'm uh, you know, secure and all that sort of stuff, but I don't do it as much as I should. But that's fundamentally my, my first hour um, on the laptop. Uh, of of starting my day and that sort of gets through, uh, you know, health and fitness is in there, work and business is in there, family and friends in there and mind and spirits in there a little bit as well through um, a few different things. So this is my sort of quick morning ritual. That's my first hour of the day. That was me just catching my breath for you. Okay. <laughs> and look, you know, like to be honest, like this is what I, I, I work towards and I'm, I think I'm pretty – close to being there most days there'll be days when i will uh not change a password and there's days when I'll, i definitely won't do forum posting every single day uh but it's just that you know it's a continual work in progress to make sure i'm as, as, as close to that as possible and, I, and i'm doing pretty good so it's all about momentum yeah how how long i mean what so so your books book was seven years ago yeah, yeah? and in then in then you had your process uh, which is, you know, I mean, it's it's a it's a good process, you know, and it's it is one that a, a lot of people have talked about, you know, uh, how on earth are you going to get anything done? I think the best best way I heard it put: how on earth are you going to get anything done today if you don't know what you're going to do? Uh, yeah? That's awesome. So the first thing, yeah, <laughs> it, it, so the first thing you should always make sure you've got before you start work on any given day is a list of what you're going to do, and having that list done the night before means that you don't waste your brain cells doing it in the morning. And I think also too, you know, there's that whole like we actually had a, a discussion in our office the other day with one of the our head SEO guys about the uh, the subconscious brain and how much it actually uh, exists or not. And, and he's I love him to death. He's, he's he's a great person to have a conversation with. He's a, he's, a, he's very skeptical about a lot of things. It's it's fantastic. I love him to death. So we had this big discussion about sort of you know can you listen to an audio book or, or something subconsciously and will you actually learn it was where the conversation started and, and we kind of get into that whole subconscious thing but uh to bring that to your point is i think by actually even getting your, your to-do list ready the night before and stuff like that i really do think it does sort of allow you to sort of let your subconscious mind kind of drift and think about things and and, and um come up with ideas and solutions and, and thought processes before you even start the day, which I think is, you know, really handy. And whether you think that works or not, I don't know. That's up to you to, well, to, I, to believe. I, I 100% believe it does. I mean, a, a, a few years ago, I read a book, and it's actually still on my desk. I have a pile of um, – I, I, I try – I'm a highly visual person. So one of the things that I, I found out completely by accident was that the amount of visual clutter in a room – affects me quite badly if i can see a lot of visual clutter my brain is constantly trying to read it organize it catalog it everything and it's it was a massive energy suck that i didn't know about um it was one of those really weird things um and now what i do it's I, i'm not quite the 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 purchaser of inspirational photo, photos and, <laughs> and posters. The, the one know. with the, the rowers on the morning lake and teamwork. And all, all, that, yep. yeah, all that crap. Um, or even the funny ones I don't bother with. But I do have kind of my my reading list is a, is a, is a pile of books uh, on a shelf. You know, pick one up as you walk past. When you finish one, pick the next one up, that kind of thing. But also I have a couple of kind of they're kind of like visual reminders. They're just the books that I am really inspired by and they're they're – at the back of my desk in a pile so the spines are there visible my brain doesn't have to even rotate the the words to to read them um and one of those books is a book called hair brain tortoise mind hair brain and tortoise it, mind 
Yeah. Okay. Hare as in H A R E. Yep. Uh, as in the tortoise and the hare. Yes. And the principle is that it's a massive book. Really, it's quite it's quite a heavy read, folks. By the way. Um, so an audio. But I can summarise it. Uh, probably, uh, I can I can summarise it very quickly. It's very simple. Basically, stick something in there and leave it, and eventually something really good will come back out. So it's a bit like Ed Dale's idea of fueling up by going and reading lots of stuff before you start trying to write that write about a topic. Just go read a load. Um, I've actually convinced a, a guy that I'm training at the moment. I'm training up a guy to become a, an After Effects operator. That's a real changes topic. And I've said to him, look, just go and just go and watch a load of these ch- inspirational tutorials where people are doing this stuff, producing these great motion graphics things. But don't worry about actually paying attention to the keystrokes and stuff. You know, don't worry about trying to learn the product. Just just look at what they do because it will inspire you later to come up with your own stuff. It's like reading somebody else's swipe file and all that stuff. So yeah, you know, one of the more practical uses of that, I, I totally believe, is that you sort out the night before what you're going to do. Because that also dovetails with the idea of putting out what you're going to wear. Here's one for you. You are in the company of giants. Or is it It's on the shoulders of giants? Shoulders of giants, yep. Well, um, on that list. Bef- go, go through the list. I'm, I'm keen to hear what's uh, in your, your top books. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> Not today, because we're nearly up for time. We'll do, we'll do top books in another one. Okay. okay? But I'll, I'll let you know that the four-hour work week is in there. Nice. But not for the same reasons as a lot of other people have it. Okay? <laughs> and Tony Bazan's mind map book. Yes. Awesome. Um, and all three of David Allen's GTD books. But we'll talk about that another time. The, on the shoulders of giants, I originally heard of Get Yourself Ready for Tomorrow. The first person I heard of that did that was Einstein. Very okay. cool. And he said, I always choose what I'm going to wear tomorrow, the <laughs> night before, and I lay it out because my day should be focused on thinking and producing work, not deciding what shirt to wear. Nice. So at the end, at the end of the day, he decides, you know, the, like the first thing he's going to do tomorrow. In this case, it was the clothes he was going to wear. I think it was a bit of a sound bite rather than the practicality, because I imagine that he also wrote a list of which equations he wanted to solve, and you know, which physical, <laughs> which physical <laughs> phenomenon he wanted to prove or disprove. And he had a little note by the side of his bed, you know, prove quantum theory tomorrow morning. Um, <laughs> And so on. Oh, the physicists are slapping their foreheads. Um, but yeah, and, and that that inspired me. It really did. Even before I'd even heard of GTD and all these other things. And that made a difference to me. So, you know, uh, putting, putting out what I was going to wear. Uh, it's a trivial thing, especially for me, who really doesn't care what they look like, unlike you, who is a well-dressed man. Um, but it, it made a difference, and so does deciding what you're going to do and, it, and and again not very recently w- was somebody said and i wish i could remember it was i'm going to probably just attribute ed dale if i can't think of anybody better um how can you how can you work effectively during a day if you don't know what you're going to do yeah you know absolutely so that i so seven years ago you were already clued into this and now you've evolved this process but like know, don't don't, don't put that all on me like i've I'm that sort of uber nerdy geek, and I was going to business seminars and events when I was 17. So, uh, I, as much as I'm going, I'd love to say that I dreamt that that whole sort of process up in my own mind. I'm sure I have no doubt that that came off the back of uh, devouring a lot of other people's content when I was uh, when yeah. I was young. Yeah, but I'm going to make a I'm going to make an important point, and this is this is my smoke blowing for the week. <laughs> but it's not just at you, okay? And I I've told I've said this to quite a few people. All right. You don't have to be the guy that came up with the idea. All right? That's not what makes you good at what you do. That's not what makes you a clever person. Okay? Yes, there are some geniuses out there that come up with these systems. You know, David Allen and his team have have honed the GTD thing and whatever. Okay? What makes you the smart guy is looking at the system, working out that it will fit into what you do or or working out how it fits into what you do, and then effing well doing it. That's it. That's it. That is a ticket. That is a ticket. Yeah. It is the, the the taking the actual ride, doing the actual effort, making it work. Because, you know, and, and internet marketing, I'm going to say this, and this is going to get me flamed somewhere. Internet marketing is full of some of the most average people from an intelligent point of view that I've ever met. 
I don't, and this is, I'm, I'm generalizing wildly and I do not mean anyone any insults, but what I mean is you, internet marketing is not full of the, the geniuses of this world. Yes, there are some true luminaries. I, I've sat and had my mind truly melted by people like Robert Somerville. Oh, mate, seriously, whoa, whoa, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. The Forbes Rich List is exactly the same. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. I mean, it's just a bit more famous. You know, there are some luminaries on there. There are some pretty sharp, they're pretty sharp, pretty sharp guys. But the rank and file of of and get me on this, the rank and file of the incredibly successful people on those lists, whether they're the internet marketing successful people, or whether they're the Forbes Rich list, they are they they don't have to be. You know, PhD grade genius, whatever people, they are the people that got off their backsides and did it. They found a system that worked. They didn't maybe even come up with that system. They just found one that worked and did it. Oh, you know, I couldn't agree with you more. Like, and and like you know, as much as I'm sure Frank wouldn't mind me saying this, and and he said it himself many times. He was a he installed um, dog fences. Yeah, and now he's one of the best marketers in the world because he tested more than everybody else. He emailed more than anybody else. He studied as hard, if not harder, than anybody else. And he sat his butt in the chair and actually did work for a few solid hours a day, and then surfed for the rest of it. But in those solid hours of work, he actually did what was needed: focus on the right stuff yeah. and yeah. shipped. And- yeah, chip it, Seth Godin. There you go. Bless that man. He is a genius, but 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 everybody can learn from him and the simple stuff. I think the important thing to say here, though, to really clarify what I'm trying to say, because I get a lot of this being in video production. Video production is seen as like the holy grail and the the um, let me get the right word anathema. Is that the right word? Don't Basically, the scariest thing on the face of the planet. Okay. Yeah. It's it's what it's like this 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 evil object. Everybody knows that it's one of the most powerful things you can do in marketing. Video is is everybody. This year is the year of video. There's Video Boss Two coming out, and again, because he's going to make even more money. Um, don't great get me wrong, course, it's a great product. Great, great course, great course, by the way. Great course, by the way. Can't can't fault him. But you know, but people are, are looking at that, and and then uh, they know it's valuable. They know it's important. But then they go. But it's it's so difficult, it's so expensive, it's so complicated, it's so this, so that, so whatever. And and the the, the great thing about that presentation you did at Ed's Going Pro was you just absolutely wiped the floor with that opinion by applying. And it, it didn't matter whether it was video production, whether it was website creation, didn't matter what it was. Because you showed people how to think about this stuff, which is... You know, do the stuff that, that that you need to do. Yeah, you you generate a mind map and you, you pull the pin out and throw it over the wall. I catch it and I do what I do. You found me, I do it for you. I do that for you. Yeah, what matters to you is the business and the content. That's what you do. Yeah, you don't have to be a video genius, but I'll let you into secret, folks. He's very good at this stuff. Um, you know, and it's the same with internet marketing and whatever else. You know. You don't have to be able to do all those things that are on your list of things to do today. Yeah? Go find somebody else that can do them. Just make sure they get done. That's your role. Exactly. Yeah? Absolutely. All right. We are so way over time on this. <laughs> so uh, on that hopefully inspirational notes, folks, which is roughly summarized as anyone can do this stuff, get out there and do it. Um, we'll sign off for this week. Catch you next week. Um, yeah, Pete, catch you in Bali, I believe. Uh, yeah, next oh, week. I think next week we're going to I have no in? idea. It's in my calendar. <laughs> I'll check it the night before I stop on a plane. Awesome. Well, wherever you are, mate, catch you then. See ya. You've been enjoying another fine episode of PreneurCast with Pete Williams and Dom Gocher. Make sure to hang out with the boys online at www.preneurmarketing.com or drop them a line via PreneurCast at PreneurGroup.com.